Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. Mark here with me. And Mark actually did me a favor. We were writing uh, four podcasts in a week, and Mark wrote this show. So I appreciate that, Mark, actually, because yeah. we had discussed it, what we wanted to do. And what we wanted to do was talk about focus mm-hmm. and staying on focus. And the one uh, passage that we talked about was Colossians 3, because yeah. it says, set your mind on heavenly things. And sometimes you and I were talking about how that, you know, we came into the uh, year where my word was presence and your mm-hmm. word was what? was Growth. It? Growth. Growth, yeah. Okay, so we growing we, in your knowledge of God and all that. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we had a couple words that, and I've thought a lot about that this year. Even though I forget that I talked about that word, but I've been thinking mm-hmm. a lot about presence, presence. You know, God, where are you present? What are you yeah. doing? What's going on? But like you said, it's good to come back and refocus. Yeah, and it's evident, Bill. I mean, uh, you know, being around you, I, I notice that you are wanting to be intentional about being present when you're right. in the room. When you're, right. you know, you so things like being distracted when a phone or something, like, you know, you you you. You want to take the time to be present, you know, right. and it's important to stay that focus is that that's the point, right. you know, we want to be focused. We want to stay focused. And the best way to do that is to fix your mind on things above, just right. as it says in Colossians. Right. Yeah. So we're kind of going with that. So your mind on things above and staying focused because life is full of distractions. Mm-hmm. And I know for me that it almost, it's weird. Social media has become a weird thing. I, there was a day, honestly, where I would say this, you know what? We're going to be the kind of people that like, I hate, I hated it when a cell phone first had a camera on it Mm. and then had games on it. And then you do everything on your cell phone and then you go into social media. Cause I was always like, a phone just needs to be a phone. I was old fashioned. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a phone on my wall and that just needs to be a phone. And if I have to text my wife or send someone and it was T9 texting for anyone or my, I remember somebody teaching me about that. So I didn't have to spell out every stinking word. Now I've embraced it. Like I've embraced every single thing uh, about a cell phone. Like I'll look at the weather, I'll look at eBay, I'll look at uh, news, I'll look at Facebook, I'll get up in the morning, make sure I don't have any spelling errors on my daily huddles, Yeah, you know, because, you know, you put them on there, you think you don't have an error, but a lot of times you'll reread it again. Oops, there's one. Uh, so I just always like to double check and make sure. I mean, but I use it all the time and I think it's a distraction. It can be. Right. Um, I love uh, Jimmy Evans. I've heard him say this many times. He says, uh, uh, technology is a great servant, a horrible master. Right. You know, it'll serve you well if you allow it to. But if right. you let it master you, it will master you. I oh, mean, it can. It, it, well, yeah. and I think, too, if you don't think it's a distraction, ask your spouse if they oh, think man. it's a distraction. Absolutely. Because I think they're going to say you look at it too much. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, it's a, it's a constant uh, wanting to stimulate your brain uh, it's a constant desire to want to and even though you're not thinking about that it's just you need that constant hey what's going on uh i put a post up what's the reaction somebody made a comment in fact sometimes i haven't put posts up because i just didn't want to answer all the Mm -hmm. comments that i knew you you know you're kind of tied to it yeah right i mean it's it's hard in this day and age i've noticed it's hard for me anyways to just calm my mind down just stop thinking about everything. I was telling my wife this morning in our devotion time, I said, you know what I got? I got racing thoughts right now. I'm thinking about this widow. I'm thinking about this thing. I'm thinking about that thing. And I can't, I'm trying to do a devotion with my wife and my mind's over here, over there, over there, over there. You know, it's like, why can't I just be focused and calm my mind down a little bit? You know? Right. Uh, It's almost like there's a guy going by with a weed eater. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right behind (laughs) us. Like all the time in my mind, there's a guy outside with a weed eater to distract me. But I love this verse though, Colossians 3, 1 through 2. Therefore, if you've been raised with Christ, keep seeking things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Keep thinking about things above not things on earth. Yeah. And that's that's an awesome one. If you've been raised with Christ, meaning if you, you're a Christian, you're a believer in Jesus Christ, look above. And I really do believe the place you put your focus can determine a lot about your life. Am I focused on Jesus right that's now? Right. Am I focused on what's above? Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. am I focused on all oh, the latest thing on Facebook or the latest thing in the news or yeah. uh, the latest thing, joke somebody's telling me, uh, whatever it is. Or like you said, I got a million things to do. Right. And that's my focus. And that's my focus. I want to hurry up and do this devotion or do this time with the Lord or whatever so I can move on to my next task. Right. And man, that's just the wrong, wrong mindset. You know, what are you, what's your heart set on? What are you set on? You know, I, I think of this scripture verse that says where the, where treasure, where your treasures are, there, your heart will be also. Right. And that treasury is like, it's like a treasury. It's like a wealth of knowledge. It's like a, it's like your passions, your desires. Where's your treasure? You're going to find your heart. That's where your passions, that's where your desires are going to be. Yeah. I do long. I mean, I do long for the word. I mean, if I get away from Mm -hmm. that, you know, I do long because I want to, 
I'm always interested to see what God's got, what he's saying. Oh, man. You know, like right now I've been reading some of the Psalms, and then mm-hmm. I get excited about a verse because I've read it. And I think those are all good ways to set your uh, mind on things above. We are, as men, uh, we're one trackers. And that doesn't mean we just think about one thing. Yeah. That just means like when we're thinking about one thing, that's the only thing that's on our mind. So my wife, hey, you're going to watch the kids while you're doing gardening. My daughter's two or three. Oh, yeah, I got this. Next thing I know, she's three doors down. And, uh, you know, I don't even remember I had a kid mm-hmm. because I'm only focused <laughs> on gardening at that time. And I get yeah. it. Hey, if I'm, if I'm mowing or doing a, a garden, that's what I'm going to be thinking about at that time. And there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, that's an earthly thing, but I got to take care of my property. And I think God is pleased when I garden and God is pleased when I maintain and take care of things. And it's a mm-hmm. good testimony and all that, but it can't be my only focus. That's right. One of the best things that can happen when you get alone with God is that you get your calling, you get your purposes uh, established. Jesus did this often. He right. often went away and solitude with the Lord. And so I think when we spend time with God, it aligns our purposes with his purpose for our right. life. And when you're distracted, you end up doing rabbit trails that you were never actually called to do by God. Right. Do you know God never fills your calendar? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you fill your calendar. Right. And when it's overbooked, that's not God's fault. Right. It's your fault. Right. You know, you're probably doing a whole bunch of stuff that you're, you're being distracted and you're rabbit trailing here and there. And just like me with the notes right now, I'm rabbit trailing. You know why? Because I feel like that's important. It's, it's. God has a purpose and a plan for you specifically. Operate in that plan and purpose for your life. Right. Stay focused on it. And you're going to find joy, man. You're going to find peace in life. You're not hurried. You're at a restful place in your heart. You're doing it out of rest because the Spirit is giving you the capability to do it. Okay, Mark, mm-hmm. if you're going to go there, <laughs> then I will talk about that because I, I think it's an important. Now, there was an article mm-hmm. written uh, many years ago, and it was one of the first things that you see when we used to do they called it a discipleship program called Two Seven, mm-hmm. which was put out by the Navigators. Mm-hmm. And one of the early chapters in the first book, you would memorize five scriptures, five promise verses, which was really phenomenal. And there was an article called "The Tyranny of the Urgent." Love it. Yeah. And it was all mm-hmm. about that those voices that are constantly calling, and sometimes the loudest voices are not the most important voices. That's exactly right. And God is the still small voice, as we learn in the Bible, and. He's not commandeering your schedule. He's Mm -hmm. not going to kick your door down and demand that you pay attention to him. And neither is your wife typically, neither are your kids typically. And so you have to learn to do the important things. And here's the analogy. They said uh, one time a professor gets a, let's say a gallon jar, like a pickle jar. And uh, he put a, he put a bunch of rocks into it. Mm -hmm. And then he said to the kids, can I fit anything more? Well, no. And then he put like pebbles and the pebbles all filled it around it. Well, can I put anything more? No. And then he put sand around it. Yeah. And they, he said, can I put anything more? They said no. And then he put water around it. And he asked him, he said, what is the point of this lesson? And one student said, well, the point is, no matter how much it seems like is in your life, you always have room for something more. He goes, wrong. The point of the lesson is, if you don't do the important things first, they won't That's get right. done. Yep. Because yep. if you put the sand in first you wouldn't get the rocks in. You put the water in first, you wouldn't get the stuff in. You had to put the big things in first. And the point was, like, your, your time with God, time with your spouse. So, so time for exercise, let's say. Yeah. Working. I mean, there, there are certain big things that are important that need to get done. I would say uh, keeping in touch with friends and making sure that you're you're putting time and investing into your friends. And if they need encouraged, that you're doing that kind of stuff. Like, that to me would be an important thing where maybe – hey, uh, there was some dirt on the floor and I'm worried about sweeping it up, might not be the real yeah. super important voice. Yeah, I think about be- Martha and Mary, you know, where Mar- Martha was concerned about all kinds of things. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Right. Martha says, hey, aren't you going to tell her to get up right. and help me with this? And right. he says, no, 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 she's choosing the right, right thing. She's choosing the right thing right now. Right. And so I think it's, I think it's a great illustration for staying focused. We're talking right. about staying focused in this podcast. Right. This is what needs to be talked about. What right. is your priority on the calendar? What are the things that you are prioritizing right. in your life? That's going to help you stay focused. Right. Stop the distractions. Right. Yeah. Because I didn't even notice the guy was... Blowing the driveway as we're doing. This is hilarious. Like, we're doing the show. This is awesome. People out there doing work. But you know what? That guy out there doing work, 
that's an important work he's doing. That's because right. I know for him, that's his focus is to serve this church. Exactly. And that's he's a that's being, a big rock for he's him. Being like, that's being diligent a big thing. in his job. He, he right? is being yeah. diligent right. in his job. And we love him. Actually, yeah. he, does a, he does a lot of work around here. And he does... We have massive ditches on this property for those of you who aren't at the church, and he gets his guys and they weed whip that whole ditch. Huge it, job. It's a huge, huge oh, it is a man. huge job, man. We super appreciate it. I love Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He'll make your path straight. Right. And if you're getting off path right now, right. acknowledge the Lord, his plan for your life, his purpose for your life, right. and go into that path. Walk into that path. I it's going to be straight. You. It's going to be almost effortless. I mean, there's always effort, but it's, it's, you're going to have this sense of peace is what I'm trying to say. I think sometimes where we don't trust God, and, and you got a point here, remove darkness, all right? Because yeah. in Colossians, I'm going to go back to Proverbs 2. It says, so put to death whatever is in your nature that belongs to the earth, sexual immorality, impurity, impurity, shameful passions, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. Uh, now, put off such things as anger, rage, malice, slander, abusive language. Uh, keep them from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, so on and so forth. So you've got to put off darkness, and I would agree with that. But we were just you just said that verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your, on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. We live in a very immoral world where in a young person's mind or even an adult person's mind, maybe somebody would struggle with adultery and they would say, well, I know God says that, but I know God tells me to wait until I'm married, but mm -hmm. you, that's the, this is the kind of stuff where when you're focusing on God and you're, you've got to trust him and not lean on your own understanding. God tells yeah. you to be faithful to your spouse, work on your marriage, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're interested. And we make a million excuses of why we're not doing things. That's where, no, Trust in the Lord right. with all your That's heart right. and lean not on your own understanding. He mm -hmm. will direct your paths. Love so it. stay focused, remove darkness. And you've also got a verse here, Mark, too. Put on the new self. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Colossians 3.10, it says, Having been clothed with a new man that is being renewed in knowledge, according to the image of the one who created it. Right. God redeemed us from our former lives, and right. now we're to reflect the image of that Redeemer. God right. himself, you know, and when we put on that new man, we're not operating in that verses just before that, where we're angry all the time, where we're, you know, divisive all the time and that kind of stuff. We're uh, abusive language coming out of our mouth all the time, lying to each other. The new man puts them things away. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to choose to trust God and to know that if I follow him and p clothe myself with that new man, Things are good. like that thing that that uh, Proverbs verse says. We walk in a straight path now, right? You know. Well, we'll look at it this way too. This let's go with the simple analogy of clothing yourself. I'll run in the mornings three days a week. What if I didn't change that shirt and get cleaned up before I came in here, and I wore that bo stinking yeah. shirt in the, into your <laughs> office to come talk to you? He'd be like, "Dude, you stink, yeah. man. You stink. You got to take off that shirt." Right. When we're talking about taking off the old man, whether it's rage, anger, immorality, impurity, whatever it is, you got to take it off before you put a clean shirt on. Right. I don't put a clean shirt over a dirty shirt. Mm -hmm. I take the dirty shirt off. I put the clean shirt on. That's the principle of the Bible. That's mm -hmm. how a person truly changes. Like if you're focused on change, that's how you have to do it. You've got to put on the new, but first you got to put off the old. And I that's appreciate right. that you've had, hey, you got to stay focused. Second, you got to remove darkness. Third, you got to put on your new self. Now, just so you realize what we're talking about here, you guys are listening, this is all Colossians 3. Yep. All these points are coming straight yep. out of the Bible. You can go and read Colossians yep. 3, and you're going to see it for yourself. Colossians 3, 1 through 17 is mm -hmm. really the main passage of this text. And going back to your point about coming into my office with that shirt on, if you came into my office and you tried convincing me that you were clean right. and you smelled like that, I ain't going to believe you. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're putting out that kind of an odor... And you're trying Dang. to tell me that you're clean? I'm going to be like, you're not clean. You I don't even like how I smell when I come back from running. I wouldn't want anyone else to have <laughs> right. to put up with this. Sometimes right. it's amazing how you can't smell your own stink. Yeah. You smell it. I can smell it, and I want to get clean. And so when God's pointing things out and that Holy Spirit's coming into us and helping us kind of like reawakening our senses mm -hmm. to spiritual stench. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to get changed and you, you want to, you want to be better. I absolutely. would hope so. I mean, I do. And then absolutely. you have living holy lives too is, mm -hmm. I mean, and there's a lot of parts of holiness. It says that we are as the elect of God to be holy, dearly love, clothe yourselves with a heart of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. Uh, if someone happens to have a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord has forgiven you. And there's a lot of parts of holiness right there, man. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's right. Hey, 
you got to have mercy. You got to be kind. You got to be humble. You got to be gentle. You got to be patient, man. We live in a day where all those things are vital. Yeah, absolutely. Right? When we say live a holy life, the first thing we got to do is define what holiness really means. It means to be set apart for the purposes of God. When we're telling you to live a holy life, that means you're going to be called out of your society, right. of your surroundings. You know, when people look at you, uh, the rest of the world's talking with negativity and caught up in a rhetoric of the day. We should be the ones living holy lives, speaking a positive message that's going to point them to the truth of God's word right. and the message that there's hope in this world. Right. We don't have to get caught up in that negative rhetoric. You know, right. We can be positive. We can be speaking life to each other. Right. You know, The widow I talked to earlier this morning, she doesn't need me to be talking negative thing about what I heard on the news. She needs to be, to be pointing her to positive things right. that's found in the word of God that's going to comfort her and right. bring encouragement to her. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't need to be telling her a bunch of negative negativity right now she's hurting right I, there's people all around us like that so we as the people of god we need to be the ones that are putting a voice of reason and positivity into our society well maybe people need to realize you know we're on a mission i mean you're on a mission when you go to work exactly if you right. you have a business let's say you're self-employed uh, let's say you go you might be a supervisor at your work you might be a regular worker you go to work you ought to be the best worker there. That's, That's what my right. attitude. You as a Christian, you ought to be the best worker they have. That's exactly. You gotta right. have. You should have a clean mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're talking, people should know Christ is reflected in your words That's and right. how you say. Uh, you, they ought to know you as the person who that guy when he speaks is the honest truth because that mm -hmm. guy does not lie. Mm -hmm. That's just not his character. But they Christ's character should so infect our character that it just becomes part of who we are. And I think that it's part of who you are. You is we're not talking about being a Christian on church on Sunday. I mean, we're talking right. about when you go at home, you're Christ servant. I, I know I'm look, I'm not perfect, none of mm -hmm. us are, but you you want to be like Christ to your wife. You want to be yeah. like Christ to your kids. You want to be like Christ when you talk to your community. You want to be like Christ in, in everything that you do, right? Yeah. There's a song, I don't remember the title right now, but one of the lyrics says, Let them see Christ in me. Let them right. see Christ in me. And I mean, I'm telling you, that's what holy that's living awesome. is. That's right. it, you know. And we need to be people of compassion and kindness. Right. Others are not being understanding right now. They're, and they're, we've heard many stories about how people, you even shared a story Sunday about how somebody cursed out somebody else Sunday morning in a parking lot or right. something. You know, like, that's not kind. That's not being compassionate. But here's the thing. I hope as people that are re redeemed to reflect his image, those reports aren't coming from people like us, you know? Right. Like we're on our way to church, you know, flipping somebody the bird on the road, you know, and then we get to the <laughs> right. church and... We want to sing worship songs and everything like that. No, we right. need to be compassionate. We need to be kind. We need to be understanding of what people are going through. I think, too, as a, as a parent, it's important to realize your kids are little consistency meters. That's a fact. Like, I remember thinking about my, my, my dad. He was a great man. He was a great man of God, and he did great things in his life. But there were times, you know, he could be tough to live with, especially, you know, he grew a lot. And, you know, my brothers and I, I mean, and my mom, too, I mean, we saw him grow, and we saw him progress in his life. But there were times where I would think, if you saw what I saw, if you knew what I knew, not putting him down because, you know, none of us are, are perfect at all. Yeah. But what my point is you got to be consistent. You got to be, you're, you go and you go screaming at somebody and all your little kids are in the back. See, what did you just teach them? Mm -hmm. Right. They're watching, they're right. learning, they're I, listening. I got a sharp me, yeah. tongue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. can say snarky things. Sure. I can get mad. I mean, I look, some of the worst memories I have are days where I lost my cool. Some of the worst memories I have, you know, even as being a parent are, are some of those days. So I realize mm -hmm. it's a struggle and this is the real nitty gritty that we're talking about in life. But that kindness, that clothing ourselves with compassion, our kindness, we're forgiving, we're being forgiving. With one yeah. I love All one of it. the best points in this whole passage is be grateful. Right. Be grateful. That right. last passage where it talks about being uh, grateful. I, I love it because, listen, gratitude is one of the most contagious viruses out there known to man. Right. When you're grateful, it's contagious. Right. And I've heard it said that you can only defeat a spirit with the opposite spirit. So if negativity is the spirit of the day right now, then positivity is the opposite of that. And positivity is birthed out of gratitude right. all the time. Right. You know? And that's, we need to be a people. If we're living holy lives... People are going to notice you and see you more when you're grateful, and they're going to want to be like you more when right. you're grateful, not when you're negative. No, I agree with yeah. you 100%. So I appreciate that, Mark. So here we, we're talking about this. Set your mind on things above. So you got to stay focused. You got to remove darkness. You got to put on the new self. And 
also, as we uh, think about it, then you live holy lives, live holy and that's life. part of it. And I would encourage people to read Colossians 3, 1 through 17. Come yes. back and uh, see it for yourself. We appreciate you tuning into this podcast. Have an awesome and a blessed week.